Brooklyn. Brooklyn dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Brooklyn dude. And then I'm gonna come over here. Richie Rich. Richie Rich. Richie Rich. No doubt. I'm 100% man. But the thought of my significant other with somebody else tears me down. I cannot deal with the thought of her being with anybody else other than me. And so when we cross those lines, because I'm a married man, I'm a happily married man, and, and, and we don't talk about those things. I had to learn to not mention my encounters so she don't mention hers. But when the situation comes up that she mentions hers, I don't feel that. I am not down with the thought of you thinking of anybody else other than me. Now, I might be uh, somewhere insecure, but that's me. I can't change that. That's just me. You are not going to think, be with me and think about anybody else other than me. And with me saying that, my wife assures me that I'm the only one that she thinks about. But the conversation has come up. So I'm, I'm, that's why I raised my hand quickly to say, I'm not down with that. I'm not cool with the thought of you thinking of or being with anybody else other than me. All right, y'all clap it up. Clap for that. Clap for that. That's a wrong response. That's a wrong response. So come over there. That's a wrong response right there. I want to hear what you're trying to say. This is about the conversation. And, uh, this recap was, you don't want his wife thinking about nobody else. So he'd be uncomfortable yeah. with her speaking on that right there. I hear you talking. So look, Tom, yes. this, this table, I think, has some input. Yeah. 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 I know they do. It was something going on with Jesus. Jesus made one of them jump out of the water. I'm thinking we leave that in the back. I'm going to make you get about it. That's what I said. Oh, this shit. What? 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 I think that we leave that at home. And don't worry about what happened in the back. But let's focus on what's going on right now. I like that. I like that. I like that. Some people have a foot fetish. They love me. Some people got a rubber fetish. They love rubber. They wear rubber suits. So it, 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 listen, fetishes is everywhere. You don't yeah. have people fetish because you ain't with them. All right? Somebody might like the dirty talk. When you say yeah. talk dirty to me, yeah. they start talking about they past sexual experience. They might like that. Different strokes, different folk. And then have you ever heard of this? I had a girlfriend. I was a hairstylist. So, of course, I used to get all the juicy conversation from my clients and things that, that might have been going on. Right. And I had a female tell me one time that it is, she does get borderline turned on if she feels like another female or her dude is talking to another female or something went down. She says she gets upset, but what it does is it heightens up her sexual senses or something like that to where she wants her man and she ends up wanting to fight for her man and be for her man and have sex with her man. So again, people have certain fetishes that is weird, but that's the whole point of growing conversations. Right. That it's a non-judgment zone, and right. it's about talking and communicating right. and understanding different people's right. feedback. I like the way how you started off the conversation. I like how you started off. You followed up. Willie, you got something to say? What you want to say, bro? Well, Booker T, I don't want to say it out loud. Yeah, what do you think about that? Um, is it a big deal? Would that turn you on? Would it turn you off? You like that? Like what? Your lady was talking about her past sex experience with her man while y'all having sex. No? no? If she do that shit to me, I'm gonna match I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. Back and forth. Uh, <laughs> back and forth. Clap, y'all, clap. Clap, that's right. Clap. Tab is petty. A tab said we're gonna go back and forth, and you know how that's gonna be. That's gonna be all night long, the tab. Yeah. I went out. And the really, really tab. They on this too? Petty. Tab is petty. Uh, Yolanda? Yeah. You hosting? 
Mm -hmm. uh -oh. So, do you like that? Absolutely not. Okay. Hell no. It's going to go to the left, but if you turn, go back around to the left, yeah, and not the really right. If I hear about some past experiences in my ear while we have a sex. So, look, Tone X, what about no. you? No. I want to hear about what you did with nobody and how it went down. Right. I don't see how that's going to add to what we doing. Period. You know what I mean? I don't know how that's going to add to what we doing. Okay, so no. Um, um, that's not that's not a turn on for me. Right. But on the flip side, what if she tell you a story and you 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 know you on top of that story? You better than that. One up. Yeah, you one up that story. I might okay. now your chest is poked out. I might listen to that though. <laughs> I might <laughs> and she be like, Fred ain't had this kind of Fred ain't had this kind of control. Fred ain't in the stomach. So like, <laughs> oh, really, Tad? Oh, Lord. Tad, man, Fred ain't hit the stomach. Fred ain't hit the stomach. That's a damn donkey. Is what that is. Oh, of course. Females quiet in there. Yeah, females. So, Brittany got something to say. Brittany gonna be the first one to say, I like it. I disagree. Okay, what you say? First of all, I feel like if you bring up the ex spouse, anything someone else is doing, you basically feel like that person is neglecting. So if you bring up, oh, well, my ex used to do this, so what are you trying to say? I'm not doing it? Why would you think about that person during the time that we're making a moment? Right. Clap for Clap Brittany, Brittany. Yeah. Clap for yeah. Clap for Brittany. You better give them tips. Yeah, I know. That's right. Yeah, I'm right, y'all. And we tip it yeah. All right, if you sipping, we tipping, okay? If don't come in here being, tell them Brooklyn, don't come in here being stingy with your little tips now. Right. You talk about I got a $20 budget, get up then. Don't be right. doing that. Price of weed is going up. Yeah. Then, you, you got something to say, but you don't want to say it. Cause you sitting there letting it stew. He letting it stew. He letting it stew. You know what I mean? He got something he want to say, he letting it stew. Brother Jay got his arms crossed. That means he putting it together. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear your feedback, though. What you think? Well, the feedback is on both ends. Listen. I understand. Like, I never had the, the, the conversation before with my wife. But listen to both ends of the table, I understand. But I'm more focused on me making sure my wife is taken care of. Physically, mentally, everything. But um, I get certain, certain people like what another person talks about the same, about another person. But me, I never have to have, have, to have that conversation in my life. All right, y'all clapping. I like that. I like that. He understands it. He just gets it. He don't, he don't do it, and it doesn't have things to happen in his relationship, but he can Well, I like his honesty because he said, I understand it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us. We get it, but we won't even say we get it. Right, we block We that. just be like, oh man, I don't even know why people are doing that. Yes, you do. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. you borderline wanting to do it, right. but you won't say nothing. We might not acknowledge it. You know exactly. What I mean? Hold on, hold on, bro. Talk to us. Because they're acting cute. Yeah, yeah. You might not acknowledge it and everything, but it takes a real man to acknowledge it and understand that if. She's pointing to this direction that maybe we need to go to that direction. Maybe we need to fix how we, however it is, or how we're doing it to make sure that she's happy. As long as she's happy, if we gotta damn, if we gotta change some things, let's be man enough to change some things and and, and be to make the uh, relationship work. If you know, and I and I feel what my man was saying. Uh, uh, you gotta accept it and be real about it. You be, be a man about it, you know. Uh, All right. Y'all clap on that clap. Brooklyn and your represent. Yeah. And Brooklyn, what you're saying that, I want to pose another question just to kind of add on to what we're speaking about because it is about communication. Yeah. And there's sometimes that uh, there's, there's certain scenarios where maybe your mate may say something to you that totally rubs you the wrong way. And so you want to shut the conversation down and you don't want to speak about it. Are there any uncomfortable conversations or is there anything off limits when it comes to speaking with your partner? Because he and I agree, or he and I feel, I won't say we necessarily agree, but Wait this is what happens. <laughs> it's, it's healthy for us to be able to talk about whatever we need to speak about. Even if it's his truth and I don't necessarily want to hear it, if it's my truth and he doesn't necessarily want to hear it, that's been a healthy piece of glue to keep our relationship going because what happens if you don't speak about something, then you may act it out in another way. Or you may end up having those conversations with someone else. 
And then that's when, you know, things can end up going haywire and your partner not even realizing that it was a problem, then all of a sudden something blows up and now you all you have all of this extraness to go through. So is there any conversation that's off limits with your lady or your man? Yeah. Brooklyn. Nope. Brooklyn. Anything in the past? Deep Glenn said there is no conversation. We're gonna okay, yeah, we're going to come to Deep Glenn. Let's see what you got to say, Brooklyn. Yo, we are not going to discuss penis size. We okay. are not going to discuss it. Okay. We are not going to. It's I'm not clapping going, already. It's, it, 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 it's, it's not going to be brought up. You're not going to make me feel any kind of way. You're not going to. That. We are not going, it's not going to be discussed. So let me uh, ask you this, what if... It's your, not going to be discussed. So let me no, ask, no, 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 no. I want to ask this. What yeah. if your girl, there was something that she wanted to talk about it? Maybe it's not necessarily the size, but maybe it's the way you it's hit not. it or the way you're doing it. And the penis is, 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 is the conversation is around the penis. Why? Would you not want to hear that? Why? Why? Because that could be a piece that helped engage. There may be times when men might think that they're hitting it or doing it. And a woman is not getting stimulated or she's not satisfied. As we as women, are we are not to speak about that? Like suppose if we were giving you all head, or if we was doing something and riding it, but y'all was hurt. And it wasn't feeling good, but we getting off. But he just said Should you not He just said penis sizes ain't gonna be discussed. But the penis size might have some, she might say, Look, I need you to eat it like this. But what's that got to do with the size of the penis? Because maybe the penis, the narrative. Maybe the penis all the way. Maybe she needs something else besides I think Brooklyn was imposing that there's no need to talk about penises because I am i don't want you to put me in a situation where it's going to come back to me and be a knock on me physically right. or mentally and emotionally and I don't want to say nothing detrimental about it so we just leave it alone. You good with where you at? We're going to leave it right there. Yeah, well I don't think most women will come to their man and say your penis is small. So I don't think that would be the thing. And I think if a woman was with a man and she loved him and she was in that relationship, then she would let him know that if she's not being satisfied. You better go talk to some of these young girls. You come there with a small penis and you want well, to. You, you your should all be on Instagram. You should want your girl. Girl, he came up in here with that goddamn Vienna sausage like he was a man. You should want your girl to tell you that your penis ain't right then because if not, she might go jump on another penis. So is she not being real? Or does she not get some kind of credit for saying that, look, the penis ain't all the way going. Can you do a little something else? Can you put your elbow in it? Can you put your knee in it? Well, you're going to hurt his self-esteem. So that, that sex, well, there's ways to do it that without hurting him. That sex is over. Brooklyn got something to do. That's the poem I'm going to do. I had a few long gone nice teeth. Uh, shout out to the bartenders tonight. Yeah. Oh, that's bartenders in the city. Yellow bunny. Doing that thing. I don't have, I'm not dealing with that situation, but I want to make it clear that I. He did that. Yo, yo, I ain't dealing with that situation, but if it did, if it did, if I did have to deal with that situation, I would say that I don't care to hear about what other people have. Yeah. You you are dealing with me, and, and we are going to uh, build right. this thing together, and right. and don't think that it's, it's not two ways, you know? Right. Don't, don't think that uh, 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 somebody hasn't uh, done something uh, that made me feel this kind of way, or, or, or and not, again, not to say that I have dealt with this situation. Right. Make that clear. Make, make, clear. make, make, make that very clear. Well, make make it clear, please. Make it clear, clear, clear. But in case, in, in some situations to where I hear uh, conversations that my wife is having with, with girlfriends, everything, and, and I feel a certain way because I don't want that man to feel any kind of way because he's giving his all, and, and once, he, once he gives his all and he's dedicated to this woman, and she is only saying that, well, he ain't uh, uh, satisfying me this type of way, then, then I'm not going to do this, not going to do that. But in the man's view, men and women think differently. Uh, in the man's view, he says, well, I'm doing all I can to provide for this woman, to do for this woman, mm -hmm. to take care of her in all kind of ways that, that I know how to take care of her. She can deal with whatever it is I'm giving her. She can deal with that. Women, need, the women are the same way, and they feel like they, uh, 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 as long as he's providing for me, as long as he's doing this for me, as long as he's taking care of me and my kids, and this, that, and the other, 
then that's okay. It's not until later on, it's not until later on when that stuff starts to he raise his head up. That, that starts to raise his head up and everything like that. It wasn't an issue in the beginning, but now it's an issue now. <laughs> Brooklyn, don't, hey, don't Brooklyn, better clap. Brooklyn, 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 Brooklyn talking from his heart, baby. Okay? I don't think that should come up anyway, I'm just saying that lie. Because I don't even see how that's an enhancement to the conversation, the experience, the relationship. I don't I don't see how a penis conversation can help. I don't see the positive energy coming from that mm -hmm. at all. Why are we talking about that? Yeah. So I think we should just leave that alone. Period. Like well no, we ain't gonna have the penis talk, we ain't gonna have the vagina talk. No, because them two things, what what we're gonna they ain't gonna help. But see that's 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 your It's not gonna help. So okay, let's, I can help. Let's get another person's uh, Go deep, man. Tell us how to help. I mean, I think if, if they bring it up, it must be an issue or something that they want to discuss. I'm like, why? No subject is off limits. Don't be laughing, If he brings it up, or if even jokingly, you know, that's something that's in his head or, you know, his heart or something that he wants to express, so I wouldn't shut it down. You know, I'm going to address it. One way or the other, you, you can't just you know be selective on what you want to communicate about. D. Glenn, the size matter right. in 2019. Hmm? The size still matter right. in 2019. Oh um, yes. Okay. All right, y'all. Clap for that. Clap for that. She said, let's talk about it. Period. No matter what, because if you're strong enough, we gonna get through it. We she just let D. Glenn just let you know on the low, get yourself together. And don't come and to her. Talk to her. Don't you come with no pinky talk. Don't come with no small penis. I'm no coming with no pinky talk to D. Glenn. You're gonna get talked about. D. Glenn say no C battery, no double A, triple A. D. Glenn say D batteries, or you can come with them square Duracell lantern batteries. You know the ones that you put in the coils. On yeah. Well, shit, the way they're making these dildos now, we got a hard time, you know, hard day problem. Uh -oh. That's a good topic. Uh -oh. How do men compete with, with sex toys? And do you mind if your woman does use a sex toy? No. You don't? Know? If she do it with me. Okay, there you go. Put a yeah. disclaimer on it. Because if you come home and she's sitting there watching TV, you know, you got a problem. Then I feel useless. Like, what the fuck am I here for then? Right? To clean. So, all right, well, we got it. Tab said, listen, how do men compete? with the sex toys that's going on now. And then Yolanda say, well, do you even mind your lady using a sex toy? Them niggas got 15 inches. Oh, what they, you got, they got 15 inches now. They got three little things that enter the same oh, thing. Oh, kind of shit. <laughs> Look at the man. We like, damn, they nice. Right? Like, damn, we, boy, we can't, boy, we ain't shit for us. You understand, Jay? We can't compete with no, can't compete inches. with no three things that with rotate, things. that rotate. Bruce Bruce? Got shit that one of them touch. One, one of them touch her. One, one of them going in a circle and the other one slapping on the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How the hell you can with that? Because yeah. I only got two. Hold on. He said he can do all that. What you okay? say? I can do all that. Yo, I got two arms. I got two arms, a tongue. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. All right. All right. And look, and look at the slip now. She's doing the smile. That means, yeah. That's what they do. She's moving her right leg, girl. She's like, shit. That's it. He do have that tongue. <laughs> yes, he do. She's trying to take a sandwich right now. And since we're talking about men and women tone, let's kind of um, uh, go a little bit with what we did in Combo, the conversation with the men and women with leadership, because that kind of spun into a lot. And that's actually what made Miss Gladys have her breakthrough at Grown in Conversations. The question and was. was what was the question? The question was, who are better leaders, mm -hmm. men or women? Do you and think why? women lead better? And if so, why? And do you think men lead better and are better leaders? That thing and got so, deep. Why? And it got deep and it got real good. First of all, by a show of hands, who think women make better leaders? Put your hand up. Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. And by a show of hands, who think men make the best leaders? Put your hands up. Now, how many men feel that women Lead better. Put your hand up. How many women feel that men lead better? Yeah, put your, put hand your hand up. up. Okay, I see it's not a crowd. It's gonna be. This okay. time, I see this is this tradition. Yeah. The man will hold on to his role. The woman wanna hold on to his role. So we just break it down. Who says women make better leaders? Let me see your hand. Raise your hand. What? Who? Oh, you, oh, I you, you do. Let's talk. Tony. Why do you think women make better leaders? 
believe that women make better leaders because we birth every creation known. So I think hey. so, you know, without a woman, there would be no male existence. And mm. in that case, you need to follow the lead of a person that birthed you and gave you life. She took it back to the essence. Oh, 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 she came over that laptop and dropped it. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> but let me hit you with this, though. Well, depending on which story you believe in, depending on which story you believe in, wasn't man here first? He got quiet. He got quiet because she said women bring everything into existence. If it wasn't for no woman, wouldn't be no man. Well, depending on which story you believe in, one man here first. Well, what did Eve do? Uh oh, it's getting ready to go. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. What you say? What did Eve do? What did Eve, Eve do? Eve gave the like the, the man understanding. Okay, she came. I don't know how to say it. Take your time. I want you to think about it. Cause you wanted something good. Yeah. But I'm a, I was getting ready to meet you in the past at the fork in the road and say, well, according to my recollection. Oh, look at him. Oh. To my recollection, I thought Eve showed the man the negative part of the experience. Wasn't she the one who? When the law came down about what to do and not to do, what to touch, what not to, wasn't she the one who was eventful in getting Adam, depending on which story you like, to mess with the forbidden fruit, right. whatever that is. Uh -oh. They say it's the apple and the snake talk, uh -oh. depending on which story you like. But wasn't she the one who was directing Adam into the negative energy? Hold on, Brother Jay got something to say. First of all, we're in the time of the rise of the black man and woman all over the earth, beginning in North, North America. And first and foremost, that is one of the trappings of Christianity that has burdened the woman's psyche all over the earth. First of all, never in the history of the world was there a talking snake. Mm. So women all over the earth feel bad, think that Al-Qaeda exists, famine exists, war exists, uh, gang violence, drug dealing, because some woman listen to a talking snake. Snakes never in the history of the world has talked. That is symbolic language that has to be understood. So the woman is not the reason that the world is in a messed up situation. All right. So let's just kill that right there. And as it relates to the question of who is the better leader, the best leader is the one who has the most God consciousness in their mind. So that could be the woman or that could be the man. And you have to understand we got the best teacher in the world the minister. Women, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Rules the world. All right. And when a woman is in a God conscious mind, she bursts Jesus. All right. Who is the man? But it also took a God conscious woman to bring forth that man. So it's not either or based on just because you're male or female does not make you the better ruler. The one who is the best ruler is the one who has the most higher wisdom and enlightenment and understanding to deal with these problems that you, wherever you live on the earth at that time. All right, y'all, clap for that. I know y'all better clap on that. Clap, clap, clap. You better clap on that. Brother Jay, what you Still, say? some women had their hand up and they said women make the best leaders. Okay. Deep in had her hand up. Brittany is clapping in the back. Yeah. Why do you think women? One of the reasons, well, a couple of the reasons is because we are better uh, organizers. We prepare mm -hmm. more, I think, better than a man. And we don't just think for the moment. Mm -hmm. We are forward thinkers. So we don't just think of that move. 
we think of the next move and the move after that. Right. Some, a lot of men think for that moment. They don't think what's going to happen after that. A woman, we don't think it all the way through to the mm. end. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, this scenario and what if that, what if this. So for those reasons, that's why I say women make better leaders. Clap. Clap it up for that. Women are men keep that bold. One more thing. Um, on this Adam and Eve stuff, um, just, just paraphrasing. Okay, Eve came to Adam and said, what? Let's do this or do this. And he did it. If he was the leader or the head of that household, he said, no, we're not going to do this. This is what we're going to do. But instead, he did what she asked him or she directed him. Instead of saying, being the man or being the leader, stepping up and saying, no, this is not what we're going to do. So that's just my input on that. Clap again. Clap again. Clap again for D. Glenn, Bruce. Bruce, I see you looking. And she ran it down. Yeah. Talking about Eve. So that Eve Say the man was supposed to be like, ain't nobody doing that. You just heard what the man told us to do. Did she seduce Adam then? Did she utilize those breasts and that body and all that hair that God gave her and created? I thought that was Samson. <laughs> we all over the damn Bible, ain't it? Samson did that too. We all over the Bible, ain't it? Samson got his hair cut off over some hair. Yeah. But did he utilize that in the tips of um, Adam into eating the fruit? Did, or did Adam see that? And that's what he paid attention to. And he felt like that's what he wanted and he wanted him to do. So that's why he did it. Bruce, I know you got something to say. Go Bruce, ahead. I ain't got nothing right now. Yes, he do. I'm going to let it go. You going to let it go? I'm going to let it go. Bruce said he ain't gonna let it go. Okay, well, You're not you gonna, gonna get him. Don't let it go, Bruce. You're not gonna trap him. Why are you letting it go? You're not gonna trap him. We're talking. This is not a judgment zone. So we're here to speak our truth and just get a conversation. I would love to hear your feedback. Yolanda, yeah. I think she's gonna say something. Yolanda, you wanna say something? I will agree that in a lot of situations, women can control men by the cookie. Mm. That's now, that's now, now, as far as, as far as being leaders, I think, in my opinion, I agree with bro Brother Jay, it is the person that, that possesses the most wisdom and, and, the person who who has more of a command in the household. Now, I'm not saying that from a from a aggressive standpoint as mm -hmm. much as I'm saying that from a nurturing standpoint. Mm -hmm. And men are nurturers or nurturers too. But in my opinion, I, I feel like women make a lot of emotional decisions. Uh huh. That doesn't mean that women aren't good leaders. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I got hung up when it was men making decisions in the moment. As much as I know myself, a lot of my a lot of my day is pretty much planned out. A lot of my week, my next year is planned out, and a lot of my buddies are are positioning themselves the same way as my, as myself. So I haven't had a lot of relationships, but the ones that I had, I possess that nurturing. And as well as the wisdom in my household. And I lead, because of the way I lead, that's not to say that she's not a leader, but because of the way that I lead, I, she don't have to. All right. Clap for that. Clap for that. Clap for that. Yeah. I got an angle. He said about the uh, female being emotional. And he said about the nurturer. Females nurture, mm -hmm. men protect. If you take that away from a man, we ain't got nothing. If you take that away from a female, we ain't got nothing. Now, last week, well, week before last year, remember we talked about roles being reversed now. Yeah. Men don't know what their roles are no more. Females don't know what their roles are no more. The reason why I said that is because words are powerful. Now, you said men are nurturers too. But is that our na nature? Mm. to be nurturers or is that for women and we are to be protectors we the head of the household 
no matter how you cut it. Now, there's some females who on their income tax, they fill out head of household. Yeah. I don't know if that's because they get a little extra money back or if they really feel that way. So now we are on tradition to get you killed or how are we thinking? Because if the man is the head of the household, he ain't, nur he ain't, he ain't nurturing. He protected. Nurturing, that's what you do. Which is why they say nowadays, these young boys growing up and they still got the umbilical cord attached to them at 16. Because mm -hmm. a single black mama has a problem cutting off the umbilical cord and letting them go. Okay? Can't cut them off and let them go. Can't cut the switch off. So we raising a generation of mama's boys. Right? And that's the boy that's got to date your daughter. Or that's the boy that you're looking for that's going to protect your daughter when they go out. Look at this cycle. Look at this cycle. Okay? And now you say, well, what's going on over here? And like Russ say, you, you go out, you have a flat tire, he can't change it. He worried about his nails. He looking at you. Like, if you, it's like, he, the, the man looking at the female, like, are we getting ready to go change his tire? Or can you help me? When my tire went flat on 400 in Georgia at 11.30 at night, my wife looked at me and said, you got it? Let me tell you what my man did. I said, man, sit in the car. And I went back, and that Benz, you know, if you look in the kit in the Benz, they give you a pair of white gloves. Yeah, they do. So your hands don't get dirty when you changing the tire. I back, got back in the car, my wife said, Oh, we call it AAA. I say the tire changed. Because I came from that single black mama household. And it was raining outside. And my daddy had to come visit. And he had a suit on. So my dad would be like, listen, you would never let your mama change no tire. Certain things we ain't going to let your mama do. That just happened to be one of them. So I don't know how you look at it. Maybe you say she lucked up. It's a sad play on the world. If me changing the tire has got you mentally saying she lucked up. Right. Because that's just like praising a fish for swimming. And you don't praise a fish for doing what they supposed to do. That's right. That was like when my son said, Dad, would you give me $20 for every A? And I said, Why well, I'm going to pay you for doing what you're supposed to do. I should pay you $20 for every failing grace. Because that ain't what you're supposed to be doing. So when they say the roles have reversed now, and we just heard them say about the nurture, we just heard about them say about the women and the men. How do you feel about that? Do you see these roles being reversed? Let's talk about it. Fanny came down a little later on the conversation. She told everybody your name, Fanny. From Javier. Javier, y'all say what's up, Tony? Hey, Javier. Javier, what you got to drop on that, man? Bottom line, I, I agree with you 100%. The, the, the sad part is that nowadays, you have too many women that are having to wear multiple hats. Yeah. Too many women have to be the man. Too many women have to be the woman. Too many women have to be the provider, the nurturer, and the protector. And by that being a line that is very clearly blurred, when a woman comes in contact with an alpha male or a real man, they don't know how to relinquish that power. And a lot of people, when I say the word power, you have to understand, in order to have power, there is a hot wire and there is a ground wire. Listen. So if you can't have a hot, it will never give you power without that ground. That woman is always supposed to be that ground. It doesn't work one way without the other way. And the other word that people miss out on when you say leadership, leadership embodies, uh, it embodies accountability. And men today, these millennials, and some of the, even, even my age, 37, they, 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 they don't have that accountability anymore. Nobody holds them responsible. And us as men, have become lackadaisy and comfortable mm -hmm. with allowing a woman to have the accountability so when it hits the fan, you can throw it off on her. Mm. But if it always goes left or always goes wrong, mm. it's on the man 100%. Come on, Javier. Yo, that's right, boy. Javier just dropped that rule. Javier just dropped that Jamie. Dropped that baby. What you got to say, bro? I'm living this situation right now. I. Uh, have married a woman who has children of herself, uh, by herself, and 
when I discipline them, when I get into their behinds and everything, she tends to be a little shitty or a little uh, which way and everything like that. But when we spoke about this long before now, I told you that they were gonna get away with these things that they're getting away with you now. Mm. You they mama. They, they, they can get away with so much with their mama, but now that I'm in the picture, when I get on them, now it's a problem. Now you got something to say about this, that, and the other. But if we're gonna raise these black men, and raise them the way they're supposed to treat women. Talk on it. And treat and, and do things and be productive. In this world today, they're gonna have to have somebody that's gonna get on them. And when I get on my children, as I call them my children, when I get on my children, they, she she tends to hug them. She tends to, 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 to and I'm like, no, you can't do that. You can't you can't do that. That goes against uh, everything that we already talked about. We already talked about this. Now, when, when it's presented to you, and, and you gonna go to, to the left, when we supposed to be going to the right, we already spoke about this. Mm -hmm. This is how we are gonna raise these children together. They ain't got no man or, 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 or father figure in their life. If that's, what I, if that's the role that I'm gonna be, then this is what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna treat them like Mary Jane taught me. Mary Jane taught me how to be a man. And Mary Jane taught me, I, 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 and, and the, the, the way that I treat those children is the way that my mother taught me. And so it's, it, it, it's, it's a rock and a hard place, and it's a battle every day when I get on them because they always go to their mama. And when their mama's gonna hug them, and I'm like, yo, yo, you can't do that, you can't do that. We gotta be this together. We gotta raise these kids in the, in, in, in the way that the world is today. Not the way the world was when I was coming up, when you was coming up, but the way the world is today. And we gotta do this together, or we're not doing them no favors. We're not doing those kids no favors if you keep allowing them to get away with whatever it is they wanna get away with. Y'all clap on that. Clap on that. Yeah, thank Drop you for that, man. Brooklyn's finest. We got some more comments down here too, Tony. Oh, we, we got Russell in the building. Russell got something to say. Honorary grown man conversations member. Come on, man. Give us your feedback. <laughs> well, I think right now that we live in a world where men men can't fix nothing and women can't cook. I know what you mean by that. Okay. I know what you mean by that. Men can't fix nothing. Uh-huh. And women can't cook. Roles. So now, if this is role reversal, not saying that all women should be able to cook and all men should be able to change the tire, but some basic things. Can you fry fish? Or can you make some pancakes? Or something or some eggs? Or right. Something. Right. You know what I mean? So now. I've had in these last four years easy um, dated a woman with two young children and um, we are both divorced parents and uh, she is the classic my little boy can't be like this and my little boy and that little boy turned around to her mama and said you are bad mama straight out say you are bad mama and she trying to halfway discipline him and I'm just like, boy, if that, I'm like, that boy would have been knocked halfway across the kitchen if he would have said that. But my point is, um, guys can't fix nothing and girls can't cook. That's because of broken families that should be together, or even if they're broken, they should respect each other, let a man be a man and a woman be a woman. Okay, and if that's what a woman should do is cook, then uh -huh. a man should be the guy to fix it. I'm not being a uh, chauvinist, but that's just what it is. Because when I see these kids, and they don't even know how to fix their bike, they don't know where their daddy is, or, 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 Listen. or, or I've, seen, I've seen little boys that got ponytails in their hair because the mama thought they wanted to have a girl. You know, I mean, just, just disgusting. What I'm telling you is, because of broken families, listen up. Because of broken families and the not the, the the straight black unit, the straight black unit of family, 
mama and daddy and children. You know, and understand if it don't work, grandmama gonna get it, the neighbor gonna get it, somebody gonna get it. They ain't gonna let that child run down the block, da da this and da da that. You know, but understand me, that boy better learn how to change his tire, put some air in his bicycle tire. He ain't gonna say, Mama, I need a new bike. You clap. Clap, clap for that. Clap for that. Mama, I need, Mama, I need a new bike. But that's it. Clap for that. And peace. That's you. real talk. Right. Russ, I appreciate that comment. And Bruce, Bruce got a comment back to I see I got a hand right there. We got a hand up right here. Bruce, Bruce, what you say? I'm, I'm all for the natural order and the way that things were supposed to be designed. But I also believe in meeting a person where they at. And myself, being raised from a single, single parent household, which was my mom, and there was three other women in the house. My experiences of from a man, Hold your mic up. my experiences from a man came from my uncles and what I saw outside of the house, mm. not inside of the house. Mm. All right. So, so I can relate to a lot of things from a female perspective. Now, now let me make this note: I'm all man, but meeting a person where they at, times are different and situations are different. I was raised from women or women raised me so i see things a little bit different than somebody who might might have been raised their whole life from a male i am protective over women and their feelings because of the things that i was exposed to being a child meeting people where they at i think that's probably one of the downfalls of where we supposed to be versus where we are and the reality is is that where we supposed to be, a lot of us aren't. But where we at right now, what can we do to fix it? So guess what? I personally wouldn't have my significant other changing a tire or pumping gas or what have you, but I wouldn't be against it. If it was my daughter, I would make sure that she know how to change a tire. Yeah. If she know how to pump her own gas, that she know how to pay her own bills, that she's equipped for life as it comes because every situation is different. But you gotta know, and it's part of a man as far as being a leader in the household is that you got to have the conversations and you gotta meet people where they're at. So if you're talking about sex, my personal experience is I wouldn't personally care if we were talking, we had open conversations about a past or what have you. I'm not gonna share my past. But the reality is, I want you to be open to be able to discuss whatever you want to discuss. Yeah. Because I need to be able to know you and where we're going. Yeah. A lot of men are scared to have the conversation. Right. You need to have the conversation if you want to have control over your household. All right. Meet a person where they at. You better tell them. Well, Bruce, 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 Bruce. Great comments right there from yeah. Bruce Bruce. Yeah. Meet somebody where they at. Meet them halfway. Glenn has something she wants to add to that too. Okay, come on. Something real quick, um, piggybacking off of what Javier said no about uh, a very prominent friend of mine. We just had that conversation about women having to step up and be leaders and be head of the household because our men has failed us. Our men have failed us. They. A lot of them are in jail. A lot of them are not doing what they're supposed to do. Women out here uh, raising our sons on our own. And the son is seeing, or the daughter is seeing, where the woman has to step up and be the mother and play the father role also. So they, it's like, they like a son is seeing his mother do that. So if he goes to the next woman, and he, he, he's with a female that wants to do that or that's doing that, he thinks that's okay because that's what his mom did. You know what I mean? So women are having to step up and we're raising these kids and they're seeing us playing these roles so they think it's okay, which is it's not. You know, I think a man should step up and be a man and, you know, be, be the leader. But as women, the men are not doing these things, so we, we have to do that. We have to be a leader. We, we, sometimes we have to change that tire. You know what I mean? And our kids are sitting in the car seeing mommy do this. So, you know, a lot of it is, I mean, I failed, but so we have to. You know what I mean? Yeah.
Y'all clap it up for D. Glenn. Yeah. And then we got um, Queen Tony who has a comment. Yep, yep. Come on, Miss Tony. To the listen, y'all, no, listen. Um, I don't agree that to the extent that men have failed us. I believe that women and men have both failed each other. But I do also feel that um, it's a generational thing. I believe that, mm. you know, Clap. fortunately, nice. um, our black men, we grew up, my brother, the manager down there, hey, brother Jamie, yeah. we grew up in Concord, a small town where we saw so many of our young black boys get locked up and stepped at, put that F on their report card felony at an early age and all kind of stuff to where the system was not set up for our black men to succeed. Therefore, they are, as black women, I think generationally we feel guilty. We hold some sort of, uh, you know, we feel obligated to nur overly nourish. I'm the only girl of three, of two other boys and I got it harder than my male siblings from a black woman because she's generationally trained to you know, have that soft spot and have that sympathetic attitude toward black men and expect to put the, you know, the pressure and the load on a woman. So I don't agree that um, either has failed. I think that, well, I, I feel that each have failed in a sense, but I think it's a generational curse per se, you know. And so it's unfortunate because they do put that stamp on us as black people, but especially our black men. And as women, we feel obligated to uh, fill that void and make them feel that they have all the power and all the control and all the love and all the nourishment that they don't get from society. So. Love that. Clap. Yeah, excellent. Clap, y'all. Yeah. yeah. And, um, it's a great conversation that has went on. It is. And then we wrap, wrap it up. Cheat. Black men don't cheat. Russell has promised to wrap his comment up. Okay. We'll let him be a man, you know, the last man to go ahead and say this something. This is the last comment. Yeah. Black According to the clock. Tell him, Russell. 300% agreeing with Tony. Yes, yes, man. I mean, yes. Sir. 300%. Now, the whole thing about black men failing and, and, and black women have to do it all. Listen up. There are black women who don't want their children to have fathers, even though there is money and things that they want because they want to look like the NFL mom. I did it all. Look at my baby. I taught him, I right, look at him. He done won the highest and trophy. But meanwhile, that daddy ain't broke. She kept him away from, his, from, his, from their son. Okay, understand me. Resentment, because I did it all. I raised this boy. Mm, I bought him every sneaker. Mm -hmm. Right, but then, here we go. Oh, the black man, he's low down. Listen he's, up, listen up. The black man, he's low down, he's trifling, he's a deadbeat daddy. Meanwhile, he's fighting his ass off. The next thing you know, when he come up to the house, restraining order. Oh, he hit me. Oh, he, you know, oh, he hit me. Or oh, some other blah, rah, rah, rah stuff. Because I'm going to be the one to raise these kids all by myself. And super mama. Yes, yeah, sisters, get real. Okay, it takes two. Okay, it takes two. You know, so all this, oh, you know, you know, you look at, you watch the NBA draft, you watch the NFL draft, and every day you're like, well, where's daddy? <laughs> he ain't let daddy in there. You know, she got a lawsuit on his ass. <laughs> Bye. Y'all clap for Russell, man, clap. But that was real, though. What did you say, Brother John? That was real, though. You see it. I used to make a joke on my comedy show. I used to say, they always going to thank Mama. They're going to thank God first and then Mama. Now, if, if, if he, depending on the, the, the kid, Daddy will get in there. Right, and the relationship Somewhere. he had with his dad. But the average kid, he ain't gonna think of that. They don't be like, and my dad is so, they ain't like uh, the Greek freak who won the MVP of the NBA and yeah. talked about the tragedy of losing his daddy two years ago at the age of, I think, 54, and how he had to step up and do, they don't talk, you don't hear him talk about it like that. It's always, I wanna thank God, and then they go right to mama, mama. who was the backbone of the family, who made sure the, and then a lot of times if you listen to them speeches, you'll be like, so what's your daddy do? Right. 
Did you have a dash? Was he around? Can he get some love? So that's right in tune with what you see, what you hear, and more importantly, what you know. We've had about three or four. Quick, Russell, hold on. We had about three or four great topics that we brought up tonight. Yes. And we had encouraging conversation. Y'all clap. Everybody here, please clap. Yes, and thank you for being engaged right. well in the conversation. Make sure that everybody that's watching this video around the world, baby. I know I got some in that's Cabo right. watching. Yeah. Because they subscribe Mexico. in Mexico. Make sure if you're watching the video, you go subscribe. Grown Man Comedy and the YouTube channel, 60 Second Jokes. Hashtag it. Make sure you subscribe. Collaboration over competition. Want to thank everybody who came in the building tonight and dropped the comments. D. Glenn, thank yes. you for that. Tag, thank Russell, you. Javier, everybody. Thank Bruce, Bruce. Yes. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Richie, Rich. It was love tonight, man. Brother Jay, it was love tonight in the building, man. Next week, we'll inshallah, back. we're going to do it again. Be back with more right. hot topics for you. 8 o'clock. More hot topics, and we'll be right here at Sports, Sports One, Peter Thomas's club. And Tony. And Miss Tony. Yes. Of being in the building. Tony makes it happen. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Now you get your plug. Got to. So, peace and blessings to y'all, man. Catch y'all next week. Next week. We out. Now over, turn it over to the D.